September 11, 2001. A new kind of violence, terrorism becomes a truly global issue. In recent years, terrorism inspired by religious extremism has increased, targeting the international community. Terrorism is a virus. It evolves, changes, spreads. Today, no person, no country, no state is safe. The sports utility vehicle turned right onto the footpath. The tourists didn't stand a chance. Inside the SUV were three people. 39 pedestrians were injured in the attack. Three died. The three perpetrators were killed when they triggered homemade bomb. June 26, 2013, early morning. A group of men broke into a police station in Wukeqing, some 200 kilometers east of Rumuchi, capital of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The 16 attackers targeted local government offices, commercial buildings, and construction sites. 35 people died that day. In recent years, terrorism has been on the increase in China. In premeditated attacks, the terrorists targeted ordinary people. For terrorists, the life of another means nothing. The rules of society and civilization no longer apply. Innocent people are dying. The peoples of China are angry. First of all, the violent terrorist crimes are against humanity. They are anti-social, anti-people, and anti-Islamic. Islam advocates unity and peace. Muslims pray for harmony and social stability. This is what Islam calls for. Watching those terrorist incidents distresses me. I really hate those things. Terrorism is not an ethnic or a religious issue. It targets humanity. It is an anti-social crime. It greatly affected us. Ever since, I've felt uneasy. At night, I won't let my children go out for fear that something bad will happen. The international community has condemned the terrorist attacks in China. The United States strongly condemns the violent terrorist attack uh, today, May 22nd, against innocent citizens in a market area near People's Park in Urumqi in the Xinjiang uh, Uyghur Autonomous Region of China. We offer our deepest condolences and sympathies to the victims, their families, and all of those affected by this tragedy. Russian President Vladimir Putin said he hopes the terrorists will be caught and brought to trial. He confirmed Moscow's commitment to the international struggle against terrorism. In a statement, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemned the attacks and called for justice for the victims. Xinjiang is in the west of China. It is a restive region that is a target and source of terrorist attacks. Police have identified Xinjiang as key to defeating terrorism. The region borders Afghanistan and Pakistan. Intelligent reports suggest that these mountains are home to more than 40 terrorist training camps. Al-Qaeda and the Taliban have acted with impunity in this region for years. Osama bin Laden hit in these mountains. This area was described as the epicenter of global terrorism by the former chairman of the U.S. Joint Chief of Staff. The East Turkestan Islamic Movement, better known as ETIM, is a terrorist organization that trains in the lawless border area between Afghanistan and Pakistan. It is part of a loosely connected global terror network. 
ETIM has planned and carried out several attacks in China. It has links to other terrorist organizations in other countries. In 2002, the UN Security Council listed ETIM as a terrorist organization. Bank accounts of members were frozen, assets were seized, sanctions included travel restrictions and a ban on weapon sales. In December 2003, China's Ministry of Public Security outlawed ETIM. It was the first time the government formally recognized that a terrorist group was operating inside the country. ETIM is not an isolated organization. It is part of an international terrorist system which threatens not only China. I think ETM had a more, the most dangerous portion in the last decade. Their total mission of getting independence in China in the form of East Turkestan, I don't see a chance. I don't see any um, chances of their achieving that here. Where Pakistan and China need to work together is on intelligence. That though Chinese have been able to contain them, let's not take it easy. These very people, if they get disappointed in China, they can turn against Pakistan. International terrorist forces are influencing ETIM, which has embraced the ideology of violent jihad. Members of ETIM outside China are active in Syria. They have worked with Al Qaeda in Iraq and Syria. Videos from ETIM and videos produced by Al Qaeda are difficult to tell apart. In recent years, the international community and the Chinese government have stepped up their struggle against ETIM. But with the rapid development of the internet and the mobile phone technologies, ETIM is changing its strategy. The internet has become a new battleground as ETIM increases online publication of propaganda, images designed to incite violence, and terrorist training manuals. The bad actors out there are quite savvy in getting the message out electronically and otherwise. Terrorist organizations understand the internet. Someone still has to carry out the attack, but the people behind it can use the internet to spread their message. Videos that glorify violence cost little and spread quickly, often with horrific consequences. The ETIM set up websites outside China. They use freely available internet services to store and deliver their messages. They are active on social media and on content sharing sites. China's police have identified the following four-step process. Terrorism is incited from outside the country, it is spread online, it is picked up locally, the attack is carried out offline. Police say that the videos like these have been part of almost every terrorist attack they have investigated. They have concluded that terrorism inside China is linked to ETIM outside China, a global network of easily accessed video and audio insights violence. People involved in East Turkestan terrorist acts must have seen videos inciting violent jihad and separatism, DVDs produced overseas or locally. They must have seen them. If we feel oppressed where we live, we should turn to jihad or move somewhere where there is religious freedom. I learned that from the videos I watched. Several of us began watching these videos in early 2013. I also downloaded them onto my cell phone. 
From watching these videos, I became more passionate about jihad. He downloaded videos preaching violent jihad to his cell phone. He got together with other people. They watched the videos. Gradually, they began to develop extremist religious ideas. Everything I know about jihad, I got from these books and DVDs. There were no other sources. By downloading and watching the videos together, the terrorists recruit members and plan for violent jihad. The videos are typically produced in countries outside China. A popular upload site is Turkey. ETIM will put its video on popular websites. This video advocates religious extremism and violent jihad. The terrorist claims that jihad martyrs will go to heaven. The very, very potent message uh, for the extremists is transferred over to the Internet. So those very potent messages about, according to their narrative, death, destruction, the bad things that are happening to Muslims are ver very much a part of not so much the recruitment, but the radicalization process. The idea that Internet should be absolutely free, this libertarian approach, uh, is wrong because uh, we see that Internet is not... Uh, Cause, but a very powerful mean of um, uh, spreading uh, extremism. In this ETIM video, easily available inside China, there are lessons on bomb making and how to use weapons, including bombs. It is a how-to guidebook for violent crime. Terrorist attacks in other countries are celebrated as an invitation to violence. In some videos, terrorists are also shown training inside China. These images were shot in the Gobi Desert in the northwest of the country. Put the two videos side by side and the similarities are obvious. The domestic video is on the left, the ETIM video on the right. According to Chinese police, domestic terrorists are learning from, responding to and copying their tactics from these videos. Recent terrorist attacks in China, including car and suicide bombs, were carried out by extremists influenced by the East Turkestan Islamic movement. This video was made by the terrorists before they attacked Tiananmen Square. The inset is an ETIM video. The targets were obvious, the desecration of the flags of several countries. They were pledged to launch a holy war. Inspired by their misreading of Islam, they filmed themselves calling for jihad and pledged allegiance in a pact dedicated to violence. Foreign terrorists provide the ideology and training materials. They also celebrate attacks in China, and in a vicious cycle, they incite further attacks. The day after the killings on Tiananmen Square, this video appeared on the Internet. The East Turkestan Islamic Party claimed responsibility. The East Turkestan Mujahideen launched a jihad on Tiananmen Square. 
The bombing struck terror into the hearts of the infidels. Allah is proud of the heroes who died in this attack. We salute them. In a statement, ETIM called on terrorists to target the Great Hall of the People. ETIM also celebrated the attack in Xinjiang on June the 26th, 2013, which left dozens dead. My fellow citizens, Allah demands we attack Chinese government offices and police stations. Allah demands that we kill them and kill the police. After the June 26 attacks in 2013, several other violent incidents took place in the area, all of them targeting symbols of the local government. Police concluded that this evidence all points to one simple fact. Regardless of any other problems, the East Turkestan Islamic movement is using video and audio material to incite terrorism in China. DVDs and the internet incite people to violence. Every successful attack is celebrated online and used to incite further violence. Statistics show that in recent years, the number of ETIM audio and video recordings has grown rapidly. In 2013, police tracked a spike in material. This was matched by a surge in attacks. China is extremely concerned by the spread of ETIM and similar recordings. The government has tightened regulation of the DVD, internet, and mobile phone markets in China. But the global trade in illegal DVDs and the internet has no borders. This is a huge problem. The ETIM flourishes in an environment that is no global regulatory framework or authority. This environment confuses the free flow of information with an unregulated flow of information. Terrorist materials from outside China are easily accessible online. But this is a global problem, not just a problem for China. This problem should be addressed everywhere. Otherwise, terrorists will spread their message with impunity. The messages include propaganda, terrorist training techniques, attack planning, and fundraising. For anybody who wants to get involved in terrorism, the information is freely available. But if you look at the context, though, um, and, and the in information out there to uh, conduct attacks, that, that's really a very important part of it. Because I know there is a tendency, let's say, to, to make the leap that um, Major Nidal Hassan, for example, um, who, who was involved in the tragic shooting in Fort Hood, Texas, as well as the Zarniev brothers were, were recruited via the Internet. In both those cases, in very complex situations, you had earnest self-seekers looking for material that helped radicalize them, but also realize there are a number of other factors that go to making a so-called lone wolf or wolves. The unregulated transmission of terrorist messages is having a devastating effect. Many lone wolf terror attacks, including the Fort Hood shooting in the United States, had a strong Internet element. Terrorist messages need a medium. In these cases, the Internet was that medium. The police in China have tracked the four-step process which links the Internet to violence. And today's communications technologies make the whole process very easy. 740. The international community is beginning to understand the extent of the problem. Towards the end of 2013, the UN Security Council unanimously adopted a resolution calling on members to take specific measures to counter Internet terrorism. The resolution voiced concern that terrorists were turning to the Internet as a source for recruits, planning and funds. It called on member states to act together to prevent terrorists from exploiting technology, communications and resources to incite support for terrorism. China is also strengthening its network security. In December 2013, 
the central government issued a directive targeting terrorist audio and video materials. On March the 31st, 2014, Xinjiang outlawed the possession, storage, and dissemination of terrorist audio and video materials and step-up surveillance. In May 2014, courts in Xinjiang heard 16 cases involving the spread of violent audio and video materials. However, you asked about should monitoring be done? I, I, absolutely, particularly when it goes beyond the getting propaganda out there and express calls for violence. To cooperate and to understand that terrorists in one country can uh, get support from terrorists in another country, just as solidarity, so to say, uh, that's important and that, that requires co coordination, cooperation between security services. And you know Pakistan at the moment is facing the worst terrorism in the world. So Pakistan and China, if I have to say they should improve, they should improve anything, it is one item, intelligence. Now that terrorists are using the Internet to spread their message, we're also concerned that one day they will target the Internet itself, as is a technology we now depend on. We call it Internet terrorism. On that day, we will all be affected. An attack on the Internet itself would be devastating, and it would affect all our children. Terrorist training videos often show minors inciting them to violence. Protecting children is key to finding the balance between freedom of speech and Internet regulation. Protecting freedom of speech, including freedom of speech on the Internet, is key. However, making sure that freedom is not used by terrorists to get their message out is a question that doesn't have a simple answer. Some countries have laws that ban the expression and transmission of extremist speech or ideology. The Internet has become a part of life. It is a force for progress and global good through the spread of information and services. But the progress has come at a price. One country's laws and regulations cannot please the Internet and make it safe for everybody. The global community must work together to halt the spread of hatred online. Otherwise, it will continue to spread offline, all too easily affecting all of us.